Hello, and thanks for joining us for this edition of the News Feed. I'm Brianna McGowan. And I'm Matt Popelka. A Virginia Tech research facility located on Price's Fork Road was destroyed by a fire on February 12th. Among the number of things destroyed in the fire, award-winning sustainable housing project, Future House, was left with no remains. News Feed reporter Mackenzie Pavisich has an update on the story. On the night of February 12th, the Price's Fork Research Station was destroyed by a fire. One of the projects lost was Future House. Although no one was harmed in the fire, the loss is estimated to total over $1 million. The one loss that can't be measured by cost or mass is the time and effort spent building Future House. Architecture student Arthur Wang is optimistic about the project making a full recovery. I feel like for, for this project, it's more like, uh, it's more like the concept. Like, they lost a lot of money like on the equipment, equipments and stuff. I feel like if they worked out like the entire system once, they can do it like twice pretty easy. Future House project leader and Virginia Tech architecture professor Joe Wheeler already has a plan to rebuild and even improve the award-winning sustainable housing unit. One more aspect that we're going to add to this, fire safety. Um, we're looking at, at the censored home. We're able to monitor you know, how much water you just used when you took a shower and how much energy you just used when you took that shower or cooked that meal. Well, guess what? Now we can monitor all electrical activity in a house. And if, you know, it, we'll be able to sense um, any abnormal activity that happens. Reporting for the news feed, I'm Mackenzie Pavisich. Blacksburg residents were treated to a documentary recently about the Mountain Valley Pipeline at the Lyric. The purpose of the film was to inform its viewers about the struggles of eminent domain. Director Mario Comano created a film over the past two years to document the fight against the Mountain Valley Pipeline. The pipeline, which is slated for construction over the summer, will cross through many parts of the New River Valley, leaving many residents wondering whether the government will take their land with eminent domain. Comano says that he has learned many things from shooting the film. Um, I've seen, you know, driving through the, for the neighborhoods um, around the towns, around the, going down 460, um, gives, you see all of the no pipeline, stop the pipeline signs, and it really gives you a perspective of what it's like to be, live in those towns, and know what the, how the pipeline would affect their lives. Awesome. The film ran for 90 minutes and received a huge applause from the largely supportive crowd. Comano will continue to promote the film as the fight against the pipeline continues towards its climax in the spring when the final decision on the pipeline's future is made following several pending court battles. The first main stage theater performance of 2017 with this, within the School of Performing Arts opens this week. After months of publicity, the comedic play has been gathering buzz surrounding its content, with the show's director giving it an R rating. News feed reporter... Newsfeed reporter Caitlin Murray has more on the story. After months of preparation, students and faculty members in the School of Performing Arts anticipate the opening of their spring production, Mr. Marmalade. This play is different than those in past semesters due to its heavily publicized mature content. According to lead actress Molly McIntyre, this publicity is tactical, hoping to forewarn audience members. We don't want to shock them to the point where they are like, this is an outrage, and they get up and leave. So we are trying to be pretty adamant about being like, there is mature content, there are adult references, there is even some sexual content. Show director Greg Justice states his intentions of this piece are not to offend, but to instead entertain and move audience members, no matter the reaction. If someone comes and they have that kind of a negative reaction, I, as a theater director, don't really care because theater's purpose is to make people feel. And if they feel, if someone feels that way, then that to me in some ways is just as good as a standing ovation because I've caused an emotional reaction from the audience member. Uh, and I think the playwright also kind of intends that. Rooted in farce and black comedy, the cast and crew encourage laughter and audience engagement throughout the show. Even though it does deal with mature content, Please feel free to laugh. I want people to be entertained by a fun evening in the theater. This play is just hysterical. Reporting for the news feed, I'm Caitlin Murray. The Virginia Tech Alumni Association has sponsored an educational trip to Europe for students graduate in 2017. News feed reporter Bailey Berticelli has more on this story. 
The Alumni Association has started holding interest meetings for its 16th annual graduation trip. The trip's itinerary will visit a total of nine countries and showcases the must-see landmarks in each country. Previous trips have attendance ranging from 25 to 85 alumni, and this year's turnout looks promising as they already have 20 sign-ups. Gwen Harrington, the Director of Alumni Relations for Career Resources, Sponsorships, and Travel at Virginia Tech, had this to say. Typically, you're not going to have a full month to go later on in life, maybe after you retire. So um, take advantage of the time that you have between school and your job and, and see all, all through Europe. One student you can find at these interest meetings is Allison Crandall, a senior at Virginia Tech who works for the Alumni Association on campus. Allison had this to say about this year's trip. It just encompasses everything that you're supposed to see when you're traveling across Europe, like the Eiffel Tower, going to Greece, Florence, um, Amsterdam, everything that you want to like check off that, that travel bucket list you have when going through Europe is all incorporated into this class grad trip. Allison has been asked to oversee the trip and being a world traveler herself, she graciously accepted the role to recruit and inform fellow Hokies of this opportunity. Allison has been to four different continents collecting trinkets and keepsakes along the way. As a communication intern, Allison helps all Hokie alumni stay connected with the university. There is not yet a designated deadline to sign up for this grad trip, but you can find more information about it on alumni.vt.edu. This is Bailey Berticelli reporting for the News Feed. Just ahead on the News Feed, Coach Buzz Williams is leading the Virginia Tech men's basketball team to their best record in recent history with hopes of a March Madness bid. And the Virginia Tech track and field team wrapped up another dominant regular season last weekend, and the returning champs are preparing for a successful showing at the ACC Championships. That story and more after this break. Okay, so we drowned the fire, yep. stirred it, mm -hmm. drowned it again, mm -hmm. and now just feel if it's cold. Yeah. Cool. Smokey just gave me a bear hug. I know. I already posted it. Welcome back to the news feed. Cheating has been a prominent issue that university f faculty and students face on a daily basis. With the move towards online classes and online testing, professors are faced with an even bigger challenge to prevent cheating. Newsfeed reporter Cameron Kopecki joins us from the newsroom with more. Thanks, Brianna. Online testing and online classes are a cheater's dream. With increased testing and classes being held online, many professors do not know how to combat this issue. In a large lecture class, such as McBride 100, which contains upwards of 600 students, it's nearly impossible to monitor every student to see who's cheating or not. But a few professors are doing their best with the help of a downloadable software called Respondus Lockdown Browser, which is a custom browser that locks down the testing environment within a learning management system, such as Virginia Tech's Scholar and Canvas. If it weren't for Respondus Lockdown Browser, I would not do online in the big classes because I mean, it's just so easy to, it, it makes it, I feel as if it would encourage people who aren't cheaters to cheat, because it's just so easy. Anyone with a computer can download the Respondus Lockdown Browser, and any fac university faculty member or student with a PID and password will have the ability to access the entire software. The way the Respondus Lockdown Browser works is that after you sign in through the university account, you can only navigate through your university's learning management system. In Virginia Tech's case, students would only be able to navigate through Canvas while using the Respondus Lockdown Browser, which prevents any possibility of cheating through the use of another internet browser such as Google Chrome and Internet Explorer. I'm Cameron Kopecki reporting. Back to you guys at the news desk. College Mentors for Kids is an organization here at Virginia Tech that teaches kids about opportunities and living up to their greatest potential. But what many forget is that mentors get a lot out of the programs as well. Every Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, mentors prepare for their little buddies to arrive for the week's activities. These buddies, as they call them, are kids who need guidance the most. 
However, the mentors volunteer not only for this reason, but because the mentors receive direct benefits as well. The kids continuously show their gratitude for their mentors. Many of them even look up to their mentors as big brothers or sisters. Knowing the difference they're making in their buddies' lives is reason enough for these students to volunteer. While many times running around with kids for two hours is exhausting, the mentors find the program extremely rewarding. Whether it's because their buddies understand the concept that day, behave extra well, or smile nonstop, going to activity day is always worth it for the mentors. Virginia Tech Athletics has not always been known for the men's basketball program. However, after only three years as head coach, Buzz Williams has an end in sight to the Hokies' 10-year NCAA drought. The 18-win Hokies have their best record in recent history, playing in one of the hardest conferences in college basketball, a 7-7 seven seven in-conference record is one to show proudly. Notable performances came from the Hokies in their shocking New Year's Eve win over Duke. They kept their momentum rolling with a double overtime stunner over in-state foe University of Virginia, followed by another win over Pitt. The team has four more in-conference games, including three at home before heading up to New York for the ACC tournament. The Hokies are 12-1 at home, giving them a large advantage for the rest of the season. The Virginia Tech track and field team wrapped up its regular indoor season during the Virginia Tech Challenge Meet. This was the last stop before the team heads to compete in the ACC Championship. Reporter Bria Cook has more on the team's success and their future plans. The Virginia Tech track and field team continued to dominate their season as the team wrapped up their last home meet this past weekend at Rector Fieldhouse. During the final day of the two-day meet, both the men's and women's team notched 10 first-place finishes, 6 facility records, and 29 personal best marks. Greg Childs, a junior who now holds the school record for the 400-meter dash, explained how the team's success is coming sooner than even he expected. It feels like pretty honored just to have your name up on the board, on the board in there. And uh, it's crazy because, like, the day I broke it, I didn't expect to break it that day. I put on breaking it um, later on in the season, and then I actually ended up breaking it, and then I broke it again. So, I mean, it feels, it's a good feeling to have your name up on the wall. This past weekend's meet brought in high marks across the board for Virginia Tech. The team led in hurdles, pole vault, distance, and sprints. But despite the success on both sides, the team is starting to feel the pressure of ACCs on the horizon. Runners and coaches alike continue to push and prepare themselves during practice and their final races to be able to keep up the season's momentum. Sprint coach Team Vaught likes where things are headed, but says there's still work to be done. It definitely feels, feels like the, the team is going in the right direction. You know, uh, when you have opportunity to be at a, a major school like this and then break a school record that's been held for, for, for years, it's always a good feeling and it's always uh, definitely motivation to the athletes that we, we are doing the right things and we're definitely uh, going in the right direction to be able to continue this winning tradition that we're having here at Virginia Tech. Both the men's and women's teams now have their sights set on the ACC championship. The meet is set for February 23rd through the 25th at the University of Notre Dame, where teams across the ACC will compete for the conference title. For the news feed, I'm Bria Cook. That'll wrap up this edition of the Newsfeed. If you have a story idea for the Newsfeed, let us know. Send us an email at thenewsfeednrv at gmail.com. And as always, you can also connect with the Newsfeed on Facebook and Twitter. Thanks for watching. I'm Matt Popelka. And I'm Brianna McGowan.